Hi, I'm Adam Gopnik, and I want to welcome you to tonight's screening in our Out of the Dark Film Noir series, which Melissa Errico and I have curated for FIOF as a kind of addendum to our own uh, concert series, uh, which included a night devoted to noir music mystery, still streaming, I might add. Um, tonight's film is one that I take particular delight in presenting to you because it's uh, Jean-Pierre Melville's 1959 uh, noir classic, Two Men in Manhattan. Our subject in all of these films is the dialogue and darkness back and forth between America and France, and no film ever made encapsulates that dialogue with more verve and surprise than Two Men in Manhattan. Melville is, of course, a filmmaker known for his uh, uh, dark films in France. This one, uniquely, is set here in New York. Perhaps the most famous of all his films is uh, Army of Shadows, uh, an extremely troubling study of betrayal and commitment uh, within the French resistance. What I hadn't known is that Melville's name itself is not a nom de plume, but a nom de guerre, a uh, war name. And I learned that only from one of Melville's protégés, the French novelist and filmmaker, uh, Philippe Labro, who I am proud to call one of my closest friends, and who was not only a protege of Melville's, but was with Melville the night he died in 1973, and has written about that very movingly. Um, Philippe explained to me that uh, Melville had taken the name Melville, uh, replacing his own given French-Jewish name of uh, Grumbach, Jean-Pierre Grumbach, um, actually during the war and during the resistance. And he took it as a tribute to Herman Melville, the great American author of Moby Dick and uh, much else, um, exactly because he was so entranced by the tragic and yet epic vision in Melville's fiction. It's a sign of Jean-Pierre Melville's absolute uh, absorption and fascination with America. And nowhere in his work was that realized with a more kind of hallucinatory, what the French call hallucinant, um, dreamlike, almost surrealist devotion than here in Two Men in Manhattan. On the surface, it's a fairly straightforward story about two French uh, reporters stationed in New York who have to follow the trail of a French diplomat who's turned up dead. Um, it turns out that he died in his girlfriend's apartment, though fully dressed uh, somehow a French touch. Um, the story itself is serviceable, but what it's in service of is this astonishing vision that Melville offers us of the French idea of New York uh, as it was refracted through all the previous film noir that um, uh, the French and Melville had seen coming out of the American 40s uh, and 50s, and which they then reinterpreted in their own uh, distinctly Gallic fashion. We're all familiar with the countless American films about the idealized and romanticized American idea of Paris that filled cinema in the 1950s, Vincent Minnelli's An American in Paris, and again Minnelli's Gigi are classics of that kind, and there are many others. But this film, Two Men in Manhattan, is a, a study in the French vision of delirious New York. Um, it's a film uh, that uses its story as a kind of excuse for an astounding nighttime nocturnal f um, photographic vision of New York as a, a romantic Frenchman named Melville might imagine it. It's filled with drugstores and movie houses and dark, mysterious, smoky nightclubs, oddly placed in the middle of Brooklyn. Um, even things as familiar to us as gas stations, Esso signs and Sunoco signs, absolutely fascinate Melville, and he lingers caressingly over them. In that sense, it's a kind of uh, bridge between film noir and pop art. Um, much of the film is spent simply watching these giant American cars, which must have seemed uh, as astounding as flying saucers to the French eye, navigate their way through dark uh, New York streets, and Melville can't get enough of that. It's a kind of vision of a city that's simultaneously a paradise of overcharge and excess and an inferno of sin, uh, betrayal, and doubt. Uh, the very last scene um, where uh, something significant happens with the New York sewer is uh, unforgettable as a kind of existential gesture set here in New York. There's no uh, vision of New York that is at once less 
familiar to a New Yorker who can't see New York romantically, and yet more deeply registered within a poetic imagination than this film. Jean-Pierre Melville, who plays the lead himself, it's the only time uh, he ever uh, performed, and he has the beautiful expressive face of a Jewish comedian. Two Men in Manhattan, Deux Hommes dans Manhattan, uh, 1959, Jean-Pierre Melville. Uh, enjoy it.